Afraid of getting started in voiceover? Hi there, I'm Bill DeWeese, pro voiceover talent and voiceover career coach. And first of all, let me assure you that there is no one who has launched in voiceover who hasn't had some bit of fear and trepidation about stepping into waters in which they've never been before. It's perfectly human to be afraid. But there's, there's the perceived reality and there's the actual reality. And that's what I want to talk about today. Do you have real reason to be afraid? The short answer to that is, no, you don't. Uh, but let me explain a little bit further and start by sharing a little bit about my story, which I think will make sense and will give you a sense of perspective and hopefully put your mind at ease as well. The hardest job that I ever took on in my life, first of all, wasn't voiceover. It wasn't even close to voiceover. It was a job that I took following my freshman year of college. I grew up in a family. We didn't have very much money. So for me to go to college required that I worked. It required that I worked while I was in school and also, uh, you know, especially the summers uh, between years when I really had a chance to make some, some, some hopefully decent money, at least work full time to make more money than I could during the school year. And so um, it was coming toward the end of my freshman year and my father, who worked in a glass factory, um, had he told me, he said, son, I really I don't want you to come home this summer. And it's not because I don't want to see you because I do but I don't want you to come home because I'm afraid that you'll take a summer job at the glass factory where I work and where I've seen so many young men do the same, come home for the summer and work and then get used to making a little bit of money and then they never leave and go back to school. And my father was the biggest fan and supporter of me and he wanted to make sure that I achieved my goals and he knew to do that, I really need, needed to, to stay in school. So I saw a posting one day and it was regarding a job where uh, they, uh, they assured the people who took this job they could make more money than they could otherwise doing a regular full-time, you know, job, summer job. And that is by selling books. I was intrigued. So uh, I attended a meeting, long story short, I signed up. And it required that I go to Nashville for a week of training. And then what they would do is, and this is all college students, by the way, and then they would, uh, they would send us off, and there were hundreds, if not thousands of us who did this, and they would assign us to cities around, across the country. And uh, I, I think they strategically picked cities that were nowhere close to home because they knew what we were in store for, far more than we did. And so I was, uh, I, I grew up near Columbus, Ohio, but I was sent to Gastonia, North Carolina. And for that summer following my freshman year, that is where I lived and where I worked. And I was with a small group of uh, uh, young men about my age. They were college kids. Uh, there were maybe six or seven of us. And uh, we weren't, we had to, we were uh, completely responsible for everything. Getting there, finding a place to live for our own food. In other words, there was no salary, but there was no money provided up front. Everything that we were to get, we would have to earn. And so uh, this group of guys, myself included, found this place, a little place above a chiropractor's office that he rented to us. And so for the next three months, six days a week, 13 and a half hours a day, beginning at 8 a.m. in the morning until 9.30 at night, we knocked on doors, door to door, not together, separately. We split in the morning in a place I had never been before, trying to talk and sell books to people that I did not know. So 13 and a half hours a day, six days a week, 81 hours a week. I did this for three months. Um, kind of to jump to the end, I did better than I had, I mean, than I really ever imagined. I made like $4,000 that, that summer, which back then was more than I could have made in a regular, you know, a full-time job. Uh, but here's the thing. By nature, I am an introvert. I'm, I'm very quiet. Uh, I, if you were to put me in a room of a hundred people at a party, you wouldn't even know I was there because I wouldn't be the one talking. I would be the one listening. That's just my, that's my nature. That's how, that's how I'm wired. So for me to go out, put myself out, to knock on a door, to try to sell a book was the single hardest thing in my life. And let me tell you, it wasn't just the knocking on the door because I didn't know the people. It was the way I was treated by people. I had doors slammed in my face. I was sworn at. I was threatened. I was chased off of property. I had the police called on me. I was picked up and taken into the police station. I mean, it was, you know, in many ways, it was pretty hellacious. That's, it was hard. It was hard. There was hardly a summer where any of those guys, we would meet up together, have breakfast, and we'd leave. I don't know that there was a morning where we didn't have tears in our eyes before we went out to knock on that first door. It was emotionally grueling, 
hard, hard work. So I share that with you to give you, yeah, so you have a better sense of me where I'm coming from, but to give you a sense of perspective. And I think when you're launching out into something like this, you need perspective. Starting and building a voiceover business has been nothing, not remotely related in terms of, of difficulty as selling books. And I think one of the biggest fears that we as performers have is that of rejection and certainly selling books. I, I mean, it was just, it was a summer of abuse, it, you know, punctuated occasionally by selling a book. There were days where I would go for 13 and a half hours a day and sell absolutely nothing and be chased and sworn at and, you know, treated cruelly. Uh, in voiceover, the only people I've been treated poorly by in voiceover have been voiceover talent themselves who don't agree with my business uh, model and strategy of direct working directly with a client, not using an agent or negotiating my own rates, not working off some predetermined rate by an organization and finding rates that work best for me and my client. And for that, I get, you know, there, there are people who aren't very kind in their words toward me, which, which is fine, but understand that's voiceover talent. That's not voiceover clients. I have, in the 14 years I've done this full time, I have never, that I can recall, had a voiceover client or prospective voiceover client treat me with anything but kindness and respect. No one has ever sworn at me. Nobody has ever uh, hung up a telephone on me or responded to an email in an unkind way. Now, I'm not saying that it couldn't happen or that it might happen, but understand, I've, I've had this kind of contact with thousands and thousands and thousands and more thousands of clients and prospective clients over the years. So a lot of the fear that you have right now in launching into voiceover, it's a paper tiger made of parchment. It's thin. There's no substance to it. It's, it's loud in your ear and you, you know, you're afraid to approach it. But if you poke at it, you'll see there's really, it turns to dust. There's what you perceive to be the reality is not the reality at all. Now, the reality is it's a lot of hard work. You know, if anybody tells you otherwise, then, you know, you really need to, to question the person that, that you're hearing this from because building any business requires work. It does require uh, at least figuratively, figuratively, if not literally, knocking on doors. And there are many other lessons we could talk about, about knocking on doors and the value of that. And perhaps I will at some other time. But today, the purpose is to let you know that the fear that you have while it's real, the fear is real, it's based in a perceived reality that doesn't exist or probably will be something that you never actually experience. And that's part of growing. It's part of growing in, into your potential. It's part of creating something that doesn't exist right now because to create something that doesn't exist that you haven't created, you have to become a different person or at least more fully realize the person that you are, which means you got to get uncomfortable. Yeah, you've got to at least figuratively knock on some doors. It might require some phone calls, it might require some emails, it might require uh, putting yourself out there in a way where you risk feeling silly or stupid or even embarrassed. And yes, I have embarrassed myself more times than I can count. That's part of growth. That's just the way it works. So I say all that to say that, hey, you're in good company. Is it, you know, this is, this is not easy to launch out into. And if somebody tells you otherwise, they're not telling you the, the, the truth. It's simple in what you have to do. It's not complicated. It's not complicated. But to emotionally put yourself out there is work and it's hard work. But what you'll find is the more that you do it, the easier it becomes. And then it just becomes second nature. It becomes part of what you do. But to get any place different from where you are will require you going on to a different path and doing things that you haven't done. I know you know this already, but I just want to remind you and I want to let you know that it's been the same story for me. I didn't magically drop out of the sky and just start doing voiceover successfully. It's, it took a lot of work and it took a lot of work before I got into voiceover. I did some things that I didn't know, such as selling books for a summer uh, to put myself through college, which prepared me emotionally and mentally for business. And again, I just want to remind you that the, 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 the fierce tiger lion that, that you, that you fear right now is really, it is a paper tiger. It doesn't really exist. It's loud, but there's no substance to it. And all you have to do is move forward and to do the next step. And that's why I do voiceover coaching. That's why I help to direct people to help them understand that if they just take the necessary steps, when you have a system, you don't have to be the most talented person in the world. You just have to be willing to work the steps. And if you do that, you will find success. Some will find more than others, uh, but everybody can find their place at the table in voiceover, including you.
So I hope you'll uh, take that as a word of encouragement and hopefully it will motivate you to do the things that you've been, you've been afraid to. And when you do, just remember that there's at least one person out there who's been through that and knows what it feels like to experience you know, the rejection, the humiliation, the difficulty. It's just part of growth. It's part of life and growing into the thing that you want to do. And I believe you, I know you can do it because believe me, if I can do it, I know that you can do it and I hope you will. And if you want to learn more about my, my voiceover training program, I encourage you to go to the link that I'm going to put in the description below, or you can schedule a discovery call to learn more about the program and to get your questions answered and uh, to give you a system to where you can be surrounded with the information and the people to help you achieve success. Thanks for checking out the video. I do hope that you'll like, that you'll share, but most importantly, I hope you will take action on the information you've heard today. And I wish you great success.